Welcome back, you're watching Animals Matter. Now, sheep are usually seen grazing around the countryside and generally considered to live idyllic lives. But we're now starting to realise that the life of a sheep is far from ideal, and now they're being intensively farmed. Peter spoke with Lynn White from Animals Australia about this relatively new area of wool production. Welcome to Animals Matter, Lynn. Thank you, Peter. The superfine wool industry, what is that? Is that a new industry? Well, I think it's a growth industry in this country and certainly it is a welfare issue that we really only became fully aware of over the last six months. And really, I, we believe it's probably one of the most distressing issues because of the fact that sheep face so many things in this country, whether it be mulesing or live export or being out in paddocks in 40 degree temperatures, and now we find them being intensively farmed. And that's basically what the ultrafine wool industry is about. It's intensive farming of sheep. What happens to them exactly? Well, they are kept um, indoors and certainly a large amount of the facilities keep them in individual small stalls, which basically, again, confine them, confine their movement. Um, they're not able to exercise, they're not able to graze, um, to the extent that they exhibit classic stereotypic behaviour of swaying, of chewing on slats, all of the things that you see from animals that are kept in an inappropriate environment. So they're kept penned up and immobilised virtually for the whole of their adult life? Well, I think there's a variety of views on that and there's a great deal of secrecy around, around this industry. Certainly, um, we got given different reports, three to five years, but to a certain extent, it would depend on the sheep and how long it was producing the ultra-fine wool that the producers are after. They kept um, coated, anything to keep dust, sunlight out of their wool to make that wool as fine and as pure as possible. That's what their sheep are, are facing. Lynn, this must be a very distressing life for those sheep and really they're catering for the top end of the fashion industry basically. That's what it amounts to, isn't it? That's exactly right. It's the extreme end of the fashion industry. We're talking about Italian, European buyers, um, Korean buyers that are seeking this wool, which is the finest, basically, that's able to be produced for suits that can cost, you know, many, many thousands of dollars. So once again, animals are, are suffering for fashion. Lynn, you've actually been to an award-winning superfine wool producing facility. In fact, uh, you took a camera crew there because it's an open facility, isn't it? It's like a, a tourist attraction, virtually. Well, it actually is a tourist facility in Horsham and it's quite aptly named the Wool Factory, believe it or not. And uh, certainly you can take public tours through there. It has several components. And one of the interesting issues about this is that the money raised through their ultrafine wool facility actually supports the disabled workers at that property. And I think this is an interesting, interesting issue in itself, especially because the manager who we spoke to about our welfare concerns was talking about the fact that he was able to give disabled um, people quality of life and dignity. And then we walked back in the sheds and saw the animals that were producing the wool and the fact that they had no quality or life or dignity given to them. Yes, that's the particular irony, isn't it, between the way we treat ourselves as humans and the way we treat animals. Mm, very much so. But when you take away the most basic instinct, you know, the ability to graze for a sheep is, is what it does every day of its life. And these animals are standing, just standing there day after day, year after year, again, without even the most basic thing of sunlight on their backs. And um, this is an issue that we very, very firmly think needs to come to public attention and also to the attention of the people that are actually buying this wool. Lynn, some people would say perhaps that those sheep out there that are being so well tended and cared for and looked after and well fed and housed and sheltered are actually the fortunate ones, that they live a kind of a blessed existence out there in their sheep farm. Well certainly the industry tries to say that and, and it's interesting in itself just the feeding issue, certainly industry sources are, are conveying to us that they're actually kept on a a minimal diet, a maintenance diet, but it's known that sheep in a drought condition will always produce finer wool. So there are certainly issues around their diet which we want to explore more as well. But I think the most basic reason for an animal to want to wake up each day is to be able to perform some sort of natural behaviour, whether that be to socially interact, and we know that sheep are very social in their groupings, to be able to graze, to be able to move around. The most basic things that any living being needs is being denied to these sheep. So I think there is no doubt that given a choice, those sheep would rather be out in the paddock than standing there with nothing to do whatsoever except to bite on the wooden bars around them or to sway back and forth. I think it's so clear for anyone that observes them. All power to you and to Animals Australia for the work that you're doing in bringing this issue to the awareness of the public. Well done. Oh, thanks, Peter. We appreciate the opportunity.